Welcome to This Week in the PNFL. I'm your host, Mark Hill. And along for the ride, we have a little mix-up, a little switch here. We have Dean and we have the co-commish, Rich. How are you guys doing tonight? Very good. Very good, Mark. Happy to be here. All righty, all righty. So... We are going in, uh, we're wrapping up week two games, going into week three games. Uh, we have a couple of things that we're going to talk about. Uh, we talk about some stuff uh, pre-show that we're going to jump into, but we're going to go ahead and uh, run through our games for this week. And uh, we're going to jump right into this. So if you guys are ready... Uh, here we go. So, uh, week two games, we have New York uh, going into Denver and New York doing what, as Dean would say, what they do, taking this game 17 to 14. We are going to start off with Dean. Yeah, they did what they do, which is win, but it was close. Either... Uh... You know, it was closer than you would expect, but, you know, Denver played pretty well week one as well. So, you know, maybe Denver is uh, going to be pretty solid for a, uh, you know, a, a team with a new coach. But, uh, yeah, this is a pretty close game. The stats were fairly close all around, pretty low scoring. Defense has played pretty well. The defense, the offense has uh, struggled a bit. And uh, Denver going with the rookie quarterback, of course, and, the Jets still going with Mac Jones, who uh, only completed 50% of his passes, which is kind of below what he usually does. Maybe the pass defense with Denver is pretty good. But, you know, they did come up with a win. They are 2-0, and and 2-0 and with two close games because Jacksonville played them pretty tough last week. So it's uh, you expect the Jets to be 2-0, and but you expect them to win by larger margins than they have these two weeks. This is true. Uh, Rich, what do you got? Yeah, Dean pretty much covered it all. I mean, uh, it was a close game, very defensive. The, the one thing that you can always usually count on from the Jets, they always play good defense. Every night, I think their offense is, you know, sometimes they have ups and downs on offense, but defensively, they always play well. And when you do that, you're in every game. And this was a, what, 7-6 game into the fourth quarter. And then Jets kicked the field goal. And then a couple plays later, Denver turned it over because Jet defense picked the ball off, and then the game's over. That's that's what the Jets do, right? You keep it close, you get a turnover, game over. Okay. Next game, that, I mean, quick and, quick and to the point. So uh, next game that we have, we have Indy going into Chicago. And Chicago taking this one 36 to 24. We're going to start with Rich. Yeah, this was, uh, you're, this is disappointing if you're a cult fan, huh? They played a great first half up by, I think, what, eight or not, 17, eight, I think it was, something like that. Yep. And then the second half, the second half just, it's typical Chicago, right? They just kind of like an 800 pound gorilla just, just kind of crushed them. And they blew him out the second half. But Denver, I mean, the Colts kept it close. Good for them. Uh, the yardage in that game was pretty close. The Colts had like 25 first downs. They moved the ball. They ran the ball. They controlled the clock. Um, they even won the turnover battle. And yet they still lost. So, good game by the Colts, but not surprising. And the uh, the, uh, the, the uh, Rich's sports betting book was pretty close on that line, huh? 12 points, 13 and a half. Right yep, there. you're pretty much right on the point. <laughs> definitely, that definitely. Was, that, that was good. Definitely. Dean, what do you got? Yeah, this is. we watched this game in Discord, and early on it looked like Indianapolis was going to pull off the upset, but Chicago came back in the second half. So, you know, that's – Usually the second half and specifically the fourth quarter usually ends up deciding the game and that happened here. So um, Chicago is tough to beat and Indianapolis looked like they had a shot at doing it, but kind of fell short by the end. 
Well, it was like that first game, right, Dean? The fourth quarter against these good teams. And what happens? Yeah. Jets make a play, win the game. Cardinals, you know, score 21 points, you know, in the last 15, 20 minutes of the game. I mean, the good teams do that. Right. Yep, definitely. Next game we have is going to run right through this. We have New England going to Seattle, and that game was pretty much a pick 'em, but Seattle ended up pulling this one off 27 to 20. Rich, what do you got? Was the game, did I call this a pick 'em? Was that a, this a pick 'em game? Yes, you did call it as a pick 'em. Yeah. And this game was close throughout, but I don't, I, Mark, I don't think you trailed all game. I think you were winning every step of the way until the last minute. When yep. New England tied the game, I think, with about a minute left or something. Yep, yep, then, yep. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a close, even game. It was a pick em game. It's, the yardage was the same. Time of possession was fairly close. But, uh, so, you know, good for you to pull out the win. Um, it, it always felt like when I, the, the times I was watching it, it always felt like you were going to win. Like this game was your game to lose, and you managed to uh, – Nice drive at the end to win the game. So that was good for you. All right. Dean. You, you, you doubled him in the rushing yardage, and you had a better third down conversion rate, and those things are usually going to make a difference. And your passing yardage was pretty similar to his. So I think that was the edge. And uh, I would say by the end of the season, I could be wrong, but I would say by the end of the season, I think Seattle is going to uh, accumulate more wins than New England is going to. So I think this game will, I think, kind of reflect think, in a sense. I think Seattle's Seattle division is tougher, though. Oh, I, no. I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, you're going to have and Mark's going to have to play Chicago, San Francisco, Minnesota. Um, all th- and, you know, all three of those teams are playoff teams. So I don't know if they're going to finish with more wins than New England, but they could. We'll see. Right. I, I well, will I will say with Indianapolis and the Jets though, and I think Indianapolis. Well, okay, the Jet the Jets are a problem, but I don't we don't know that the Colts are a problem yet. I mean, they might be, but they, yeah, there's no his, there's no history of the Colts winning ten, eleven, twelve games. There is a history of of Barney, Charlie, and Justin winning double digits, making the playoffs multiple times. So you have to assume that those three teams are going to push the playoff uh, race with Jerry. That's how I would see it. I would see that those four right. are the top four. So how, are you going to win more games? I don't know. The six-year games against those guys. So, That's cool. we'll I think I'm just making more of a statement about Seattle versus New England. I think Seattle's a better team in New England, but they'd probably right. play a tougher schedule because of being in that division. Right. That's true. All right. Next game, we have Jacksonville at Atlanta, and this is going to be interesting. Um, I'm going to start with Rich on this as Atlanta took the L at 31 to 11 in favor of Jacksonville. So, um, <sighs> Rich, what do you think happened? Well, Jacksonville, the yardage is pretty close, right? But Jacksonville was just far more efficient in everything they did. I mean, what, Dean, you threw for 46% of your passes. You only ran for 50 yards. It was a struggle to get your 346 yards. Where for Jacksonville, Jacksonville completed 66%, couple touchdowns. They ran for 145. They controlled the clock. They kept the ball moving. It was just, it was seamless for Jacksonville. And, you know, they got the one turnover. Um, but you seemed to struggle offensively. You, you couldn't quite get out of your own way. I don't know what your take on it was, but that's what I saw. Well, we watched this game in Disco, too, when you watch it. My offense absolutely sucked. Right. It just the running game sucked. The passing game, for the most part, 
I'm surprised that we're even 46% completions. The passing game is terrible. The offense, I don't think the defense looks as bad as giving up 31 points, but when the offense doesn't do anything, I mean, it's 11 points. It was one touchdown drive with a two point conversion. And, and at one, and, and if I remember right, the, the other possession was a big play in which after the, that big play, my, my offense didn't do anything with it and they kicked a field goal. So you're only talking like really one legitimate drive in the entire game. And the rest of the time, the offense many times just went three and out. And when you're going three and out, even a good defensive PPP is going to give up points because your defensive players just gets, get tired playing all those minutes. And you look at the time of possession, you know, Jacksonville had the ball for nearly 35 minutes. And I don't even think that that Jacksonville offense was trying to play ball control. It's just my offense was so bad that Jacksonville's offense had the, had the ball that many minutes. It didn't look like Jacksonville made big plays, but they were efficient in what they did. They were only averaging, what, 6.8 per pass. You had a higher average with that. But it seemed like Jacksonville, they were just moving the chains all game long. They were just moving the chains. No huge plays, but controlling the clock and just kept moving the ball down. And that's why the yardage is pretty close. But again, they, they did it so much more efficiently than you did. And you struggled to get those 346 yards. Um, and you're, you're right. When your defense is, you know, when your offense is that bad, the other team is just, they, you know, Jacksonville was in cruise control all game. It was just one of those games where uh, you just, it was ugly for you. Yeah, that 8.4 average was skewed by the fact that there were 13 passes completed, and I think there were two big plays. So, right. It's, I mean, you only score 11 points, so that, that's almost useless. It doesn't yep. get you anywhere. Yeah. Right, but six point eight for Jacksonville is not exactly high. That's not a great. It's not a great number. And he completed, you know, two two hundred and twenty three yards in the air is not a huge number, um, but he was doing enough. He was doing, and he would, again, he was moving the chains. It's you know twelve years, you know, five yards plus seven plus three. Played, he run the ball for five. He no big plays by him. He kept you on the field. He kept your defense on the field, and your right. offense stinks. And then there you go, thirty one eleven. Hmm. Yeah, that was um, not. Yeah, not really a a good way to to go through the game. I mean, I I would have thought with the scores going back and forth, I would have thought that Houston would have pulled. Um, well, hang on, let me back up. Let me back up. I'm looking at the wrong game. Um, <laughs> no, I scroll through. Um, I I predicted Atlanta to win this game. And I was surprised that um, Jacksonville did what they did. I mean, I was I watched this game even though I didn't see it in um, off the um, off the lineup as far as how uh, Mitch was running it. But I, I watched it offline. I'm like, holy crap! I I projected. Dean to win it, and mm, mm, I, I I don't know. Just um, I got to concur with you on, on that one, Rich, because uh, you know we we've kind of talked offline over the past season and a half, and you kind of gave me some insight as far as what um, what to look for in teams and. Uh, Sorry, Dean. Um, the things that Rich told me is that, yeah, you were kind of a little bit short on some of those things. But, you know, it's only two weeks into the season. And um, like I've been told, it's like, hey, you know, you're still trying to fill each other out. And I think you can turn it around. So that's me and my little Pollyanna <laughs> chat. So anywho. I, I try to be positive for everybody, okay? Don't hate. Don't hate. So. <laughs> you don't have Mitch. You don't right. have Mitch. Uh, you uh, all right. Speaking, you speaking of Mitch, because <laughs> speaking of Mitch, because he is not here tonight, we have Houston taking on or going out to Philly. And um, I did not expect this one as Philly took this one 
37 to 31. Wow. Dean, we're going to start with well, you. There was lots of trash talk. <clears throat> Excuse me. There was lots of trash talk on Discord about this, and James was predicting doom for his team and that he was going to lose, and he was saying that Rich should have put, like, a big spread on this in favor of Houston. And I said not so fast. I said this. I see an upset here. I said Philadelphia is going to win. And I predicted 37 to 34 in Discord. Well, I'm off by three points, a single field goal. And I should have remembered, I don't know if it happened in this game, I should have remembered that Mitch's kick and misses field goals and lowered that 34 a bit. But I was right on the mark on the 37 that Philadelphia was was going to score in Discord because one of our overtime was a close game. But um, I don't know whether James was just – um, underestimating his ability to beat Mitch or if he was kind of hoping that Mitch would be a bit overconfident by saying those things. But, uh, you know, this was a good game. It went back and forth and uh, went into overtime and the Eagles got the ball and marched downfield and put it in the end zone and uh, that decided the game. Okay. Rich, what you got? No, well, this this was a this was the most fun game of the week, right? I mean, all those points and and then uh, James racking up 520 yards of offense, and I mean, oh my God, 41 uh, 41 minutes of time. He almost he almost well, he double him, 41 to 23. That's pretty significant. Ran for 200 yards. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know where Mitch's defense was. I know Mitch prepares and plans and. And, and I guess, you know what happened? This is what happens early in seasons. I told Jerry this because Jerry had made a comment, emailed me about something, that I think in the first four weeks of the season, you will see more upsets than you'll see in the other, in the rest of, you know, the other quadrants of the season. You just don't see them as often. I think this kind of falls into that. I don't think right. that Mitch will give up 520 yards of offense again this season. It just won't happen. Um, but it, but you know what? J- give James credit. He obviously prepared for this game, and he did some stuff apparently that Mitch wasn't ready for, and um, he did a nice job. And even still, he still needed overtime for that game. Um, but that was a fun game. So good for James. It's nice to see James off to a good start. Yeah, I I have to agree with you on that one. Um, I did not expect that one coming on, but. Um... You know, it was it was a fun game. It was an interesting game. It was one of the games that I definitely made sure that I tuned into to um, see how that turned out. So, uh, next game we have Las Vegas taking on L.A. and um, I did not expect this one with uh, Vegas taking a twenty six to nine victory. I know that Steve had a lot to say about this, but uh, let's go ahead and start with you, Rich, on this one. I didn't see this one either, um, but Vegas, yeah, I mean, they did a great job. Their quarterback, what, threw for almost 80% of his passes? I mean, that's pretty uh, remarkable. Um, I don't know what to say, but again, I, I put this in the category of early season. Um, you don't know what teams are going to do. I think Steve probably did not really prepare very long for this game. And he got it shoved down his throat a bit. Uh, I didn't realize, I think, didn't uh, didn't Neil say that he's beaten them like three or four times in a row maybe or something? Something like that, yes. In one of the emails? Yes, yes, yeah, yes, I, yes. I'm not, I didn't realize that. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Maybe Steve isn't taking him seriously enough because his season record is, you know, 5-11 and 11 or whatever. But... Uh, I think this this game is going to wake him up a little bit. So, I don't know. But Steve didn't – he didn't get in the end zone, did he? Did he kick three field goals for the game? I don't think so. Yeah, that's uh, that's a rough one for Steve. So, And after after last week's overtime loss to, to James, this is a rough way to start the season because, you know, he's going to have his hand – because clearly he's going to have his Pittsburgh also. So – and Mitch – 
you know, that that division is is, is very t- very difficult. And Brian has played well the first two weeks, so Steve is going to have to wake up unless he's uh, tossing in the season already. Yeah. Yeah, Dean. I will say uh, I'm looking here and I <clears throat> I see my uh, text from last week and it says Raiders, but I'm pretty sure I said on the show that that Ellie was going to win but wasn't going to cover the spread. Um, you know, Las Vegas was five and eleven last year, but they lost quite a few close games. And Neil is getting a lot better at this and is improving. And I think uh, I don't know whether to, I, I can't I can't speak to what degree. Steve is taking seriously of putting a lot of preparation in, but he did mention that he lost, I believe, the last three games to Las Vegas. So I'm not entirely surprised by this. It still is somewhat of an upset, but I think the Raiders are going to going, are going to be better this season than, than a lot of people realize. I'm not predicting they're going to go to the playoffs or in a tough division. And, uh, you know, Brian and Denver might uh, be pretty good, especially for a, a first-year coach who uh, just joined the PNFL. But uh, don't be surprised to see the Raiders win more games this year, even when they're not favored, because it, it may just happen. And this, this win might be the one that uh, gives them some attention for that. Okay. Next game that we have on our list here. Let's see. Who do we have that's next? Uh, we have New York hosting Pittsburgh and um I um I want to get your guys a take on this cuz I am I mean I pe- I predicted Pittsburgh on this um and Pittsburgh did win but I think with 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 the co-commish I, I I'm kind of no offense, Dean. I'm kind of interested in in, in Rich's take on this because he's seen a lot as Pittsburgh took this one 27 to 24. Rich, what do you got? Well, I mean, the game obviously the game was end, ends, ended pretty close. I mean, Pittsburgh was in, kind of in control of this game. And um, then, then, you know, they were up by 11, I think, uh, at half, you know, at halftime and Giants did come back a bit, but this just generally speaking, I'm kind of bullish on Pittsburgh in general. Um, he he's played a lot of close games last year, like like Vegas, right? I think some of these coaches, you know, Pittsburgh, Vegas, Indy, these guys appear to be perhaps taking a, another step in their coaching, and they're going to be difficult outs. I so I expect Pittsburgh to play well all season. I don't think this is certainly not an upset. Um, but so I'm, you know, again, I'm kind of happy to see Pittsburgh um, get off to this 2 0 start and put a little pressure on that division. It's kind of interesting to see Pittsburgh and Vegas. I mean, I don't know if either one of them are going to make the playoffs, but I think they're going to be more of a factor than we think. I don't think we're going to necessarily see Mitch run off and win 14 games, and you know, now that Barney's gone or anything like that. So. That's a good one. That's a good one for Pittsburgh. And um, again, he was controlling the game, and then and then he kind of let up the Giants. He threw a couple interceptions, and he got the Giants back in this game. But I think Pittsburgh is the better team. Okay, Dean, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, last season we saw that there were some close games with Pittsburgh, and they're in a kind of up and down. They were kind of up and down. So maybe this is year that Pittsburgh does, uh, you know, take the next step. And uh, I guess I guess they uh, they did pretty well in this game and wasn't as close as the score indicates. And, you know, you have to wonder how competitive the Giants are. I mean, they beat my team week one in a 17-14 game that was fairly close. I don't know how much you can read out of this. Or this game was ultimately decided by three points, so you – May not read a whole lot out of that, but uh, it was also in slop too. So I, I didn't mention that this game was played in the rain. I mean, you know, Pittsburgh two interceptions, two fumbles. They didn't lose them, but they fumbled it, which of course we know ruins a drive. The Giants got picked off once. They fumbled four times. So your offense is not going to move if you're fumbling. So 
it was a sloppy game. So I'll you give the Giants. The Giants will you know give them a pass on that. But generally speaking, I, I really do think Pittsburgh is someone to look at this season of perhaps taking that next step and making a playoff run. Okay. Yeah, I agree. It, it, that could happen. All right. As we come down to our final uh, two games of week two, we have San Francisco hosting Minnesota. And Minnesota taking this game 24 to 21. Dean. You know, if I pick the 49ers to win and cover the spread, they win and don't cover the spread. <laughs> if I pick the 49ers to get beaten, they win, it seems like. And uh, this is a close game settled by a field goal. And uh, I, I had picked Minnesota to win this game, and I thought they would have. And if I remember right, I believe Mitch was, uh, you know, picked up his pom-poms and was uh, on the Barney train picking this win as well. And, uh, you know, Charlie pulled it up by a field goal. So, uh you know, Charlie can uh, can be, his team can be tough at times, so they're not out of it either. All right, Rich. Yeah, I, I watched a bit of this game, and I thought San Francisco outplayed them the whole time. I, I think San Francisco was was an inch away from blowing them out, except they they turned the ball over four times, two interceptions, two fumbles. Um, and they still won the game by three points. I, I think this. I think San Francisco played a very good game, uh, despite the turnovers. And I thought they were the, they were the better. And I don't know. I don't know. But it just didn't. It felt like all game San Francisco was going to win this game, and they maybe even blow them out. But they just kept stubbing their toe and giving Minnesota chances to get back in the game, and they did. And it required a uh, late field goal to to finish finish them off. So. If I'm Charlie, I'm happy and feel lucky that I. But you know, I wouldn't be happy with all those those turnovers. Right, definitely something that we'll have to uh, have a conversation about and uh, and discuss. So, uh, last game that we have, we have Washington hosting Green Bay, and Washington winning this one, thirty-eight to fifteen. Rich. Um, there's there's nothing to discuss when you average nine point nine point seven on the ground, two hundred and fifty three yards. Basically, um, Green Bay was ill prepared to defend the run, and you have no chance of winning after that. Uh, Washington only threw one hundred and had one hundred and sixty three yards in the air. They didn't have to pass the ball. They basically ran at will. So. You're not winning if you can't stop the run. So Green right. Bay needs to get back to work and uh, figure that out. Okay. Dean, what do you got? Yeah, as you would say, Washington does what Washington does, and they win, and they win convincingly. And, you know, look at these stats. Green Bay put up 447 yards of offense but only scored 15 points. I mean, that looks like what my offense did week one, moved the ball a lot, but just didn't score the points. I mean, what is he using my offense? And three turnovers. Yeah, giving up 9.7 yards per rush. Is he also playing my pass defense here? <laughs> That's, That's a bad <laughs> formula. Three turnovers yeah. and giving up 9.7 per rush. Mm-hmm. And then not capitalizing on your own offense opportunities either. That's like that's like three strikes against you right there. That's uh, that's not a way to not a way to do it. Right. All right. So uh, ran through the uh, week two games as we're gonna go ahead and pivot over to our middle segment as we. Um, Talked a little bit pre-show. We really didn't have anything lined up. Um, definitely. So, um, I guess we're going to go ahead and open just open it up. Uh, hate to put Rich on the um, on the spot here, but uh, where you do you me see? On the spot, huh? Yeah, where do you see we're at in this early season? I mean. Uh, I know from a personal experience, 
I had to send two messages in to you because I had guys that were out <laughs> for nine weeks or so. So, <laughs> Uh, on uh, the IR to return, but um, I, I I do like your your um, your commentary on the league of the state of the league because you've been doing this for quite a while. So uh, in this early season, uh, what do you? So you want you my seeing? presidential uh, address? To exactly, the state of the exactly. <laughs> the state of the league is strong. Okay. How about that? I mean, we're. I think we're. I think we're doing great, right? I mean, has the league ever been more popular than it is right now? Uh, I think so. I, I don't mean, know. it's, it's I, been I don't, pretty I'm popular. Sure could, I'm not sure I could say it has been. It's, we're doing. You know, you guys are doing your thing, and I got other people talking about other podcasts they're considering doing, and Mitch is traveling around the internet trying to spread the word. And yeah, I think Charlie said he's gotten contacted from. I want to say three new people, right. a couple of who are really interested in joining, and they're supposedly following along. I don't know, um, so I don't know. I don't. The good things are happening. All of a sudden, is it possible we could one day expand? I, I mean, it's I, not. I, I think impossible. that's a possibility that we could possibly expand it. It's not impossible. Do I see it happening? No, but is it impossible? No, it's. I guess not. I mean, it, it all depends if, you know, the the word is people. More people know about the league, and they they used to play it, and they're interested. I mean, I guess if we all of a sudden have six, seven, eight new guys who are all like dying to play, we would really have to consider it. But let's face it, eighteen to thirty is a big jump, and. I, that's 12 new guys. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'd really rather not have a league of six open teams or anything like that. So I don't know what you guys, how you guys feel about that. Um, you know, I, I, will, I will defer to uh, Dean to comment on this. What's your take on it, Dean? I would say, I wouldn't necessarily rule out having, say, six out of 30 open teams and, you know, headless horseman PPP. I think you'd you'd want to get in that situation only if you're reasonably confident that we'd have a chance of starting to fill some of those six openings if we're in that situation. So, and that's where we're we're not we're not there yet. But I mean, like you saw the post that Mitch put on the forum. He went to that other website. I don't even know what that site is, and he posted our league stuff he posted the newsletter there and he posted the youtube you know uh channel so who knows maybe maybe there are people out there and we can get the word out there and and you never know i guess you know you also have old coaches i thought i heard a rumor remember dan who w was coach of C uh, cincinnati that even he was kind of wavering or at, at least considered the idea of maybe coming back i would like to see that wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I know he, I think he just had another baby, so I'm not saying it's it's likely, but I mean, who knows? Maybe there are 12 more guys out there who would want to play. So the, the the key also is though not just finding 12 new ones; it's holding on to the 18 you have. I don't know. I mean, I I kind of have a feeling we we got a pretty good group right now. I mean, it seems like everyone is very interested, and they nobody's looking to leave. I don't think. I don't think. So, I don't think we're going to have anyone yeah. that's going to be leaving right now. I think we're. Uh, I think the guys are that are here in the league. Um, they're enjoying what we're doing right now. I think all the different things that we're doing, um, you know, the podcast, and then now um, Mitch has already started with the. Um, with the Discord, with the games, I think in two weeks, yeah. there's been a lot of uh, interest and a lot of uh, people perking up to that. So, I think the that new schedule helps has well. really helped that, by the way. That I mean, I, and I'm speaking selfishly, of course, but the new schedule, I think, is good for this league because it's 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 helped me condense my schedule. It really is nice to feel like you have a weekend again. I'm done with these games uh, now. Early Saturday, like my time. 10 o'clock Saturday morning in Arizona, I was finished. I was done. The games were all out there. The website was updated. I, I had to send out an email. That's it. 
Um, so that's night and day to compare to where it was in previous seasons where it really felt like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and maybe even into Sunday. Um, I think is now things are more condensed and Mitch can do his discord on Friday night and even Saturday if he wants to, but the, sat the Friday night to get two or three games out there, that's perfect. That's good for the league. That kind of keeps the interest up. Um, you guys seem to be enjoying it, you know, along with your WhatsApp thing. So I, I, all, thing all things are good right now, right? I think it's good for the rest of us too because then your game is done by sometime on Saturday and Saturday afternoon and into Sunday, you can start preparing for the next week's game. So I think it works out. I think it's a better week to week schedule for all of us as well. So, um, and, that's, and I, I think that too. I think you guys are better off having the, your prep time mostly after on Saturday morning slash afternoon, whenever you get the files, let's say one o'clock in the afternoon. You have all day Saturday, all day Sunday to do whatever you want to do, to, to, you know, really? to be with your family or prepare for the, the league, whatever you want to do. Because Monday through Friday, your time is limited. And the way it was in the past, what, you know, by the time the weekend comes, games are already starting to play. And so there's this pressure to send. So you don't even have time on the weekends to really prepare because the games are, were spread out over Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and occasionally a Sunday game would be in there. So you wouldn't have the files until Sunday at noon. I mean, so that's no good. So now you have two full weekend days to prepare if you choose to. So it's better for you. It's definitely better for me. It feels like I don't even, I'm not even doing anything anymore. So it's, it's been great. Okay. So it has been going pretty good so far. All right. So as um, we are finishing that up, going into our middle segment, and I know we kind of, pushed off to it a little bit, but um, middle segment going into... Um, Your voice kind of went low volume a minute. Then what happened? What was, that? what was that, Dean? Your voice kind of went low volume suddenly. I don't know what happened. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. How's that? Is that a little <laughs> bit better? You're back. You're back. Okay, I am back. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, that's what I'm having to deal with a dog sitting here uh, kind of nuzzling the... Um, the control board so a little bit so um so as we've gone through the games uh thus far uh going into the middle segment uh looking into the early stages uh going into week three um i'm kind of curious as to what you guys are seeing so far um with the league at this point i mean i know that uh rich talked a little bit about it um where we're at and um overall do you i mean i mean we talk about the competition being a little bit better so i i don't know is there anything we need to add to that or we just just go ahead and jump into the third segment <laughs> you got anything dean no i think that's pretty much it i mean i think uh some of the i guess i could call it community that's kind of that's kind of developing and building up, you know, between the, the WhatsApp thing and the Discord thing that, uh, you know, that Mitch is doing and gives us more chances to interact and talk about the games and do trash talk. It's, it's more, it's more interactive. It's more immediate than the forum. And, and, you know, I think the reason why the email got used a lot in the past, cause it's more immediate and, and, you know, Charlie says, well, take it to the forum, take it to the forum. And, you know, the forum has its purpose. The forum is good for doing all of our business post your free agent bids and your practice squads and, and your contract and all that stuff. But we're finding this, it's, it's just as interactive as the email, but it takes it to a different place to, to do discord and do the WhatsApp thing. And it, I think it's uh, along for a lot more communication, a lot more trash talk, a lot more information to be exchanged. And I think it's, it's helping strengthen the league also. So I think all of that is a good thing too. I agree with you. I think it is all good, and I hope you guys keep. You know, I haven't been in the WhatsApp. I don't think I didn't install it yet. Um, but it's it's really for the coaches to to do that. I mean, I'm not going to go in there and trash talk. That's not. I'm not really interested in that. I have to do what I have to do. You guys are the coaches. You guys are participating and competing. 
Um, so that's, I think that's great. I think, I hope you guys keep it up. I hope Mitch keeps up the Friday podcast, uh, you know, in, in, in discord and stuff. Uh, and you know, that's, it's all good for the league. The more, the more you guys get together, the better off this league will be. So okay. it's all good. All right. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump into it as we are uh, running a little long on time. Let's go ahead and pivot over to our third segment, which is coming up with our games. And obviously, since uh, Mitch is out, uh, we're going to have Rich fill in for him. Uh, are, are, my, are my picks Mitch's picks? Yep, your picks <laughs> are Mitch's picks, so you better pick them right. Uh, and he had to clarify for me. You guys uh, are just picking the winner of the game, correct? Well, we are. Be, well, you know, in the past, we've. You picked, don't care about the spread. Mitch told me you guys don't factor in the spread with, on your. Uh, pick. We don't factor in the spread. Um, I think sometimes we do, but a lot of time, for me personally, I kind of look at what the team has been doing. And I have my own criteria that I look at. So, yeah, mine is showing us by whether we pick or you know whether we pick the right winners. But a lot of times when we do make picks, we may say that we think they're going to win and not cover the spread, or win and then will cover the spread. Or we sometimes comment a win loss record that Mark puts out. He's not factoring in the spread though. No, right, I'm not. No, I am not factoring okay. in the spread. No, I am not. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I, I was because cu- that's where I was getting a little confused because it sometimes seemed like Mitch would pick a team, but they're not going to cover, but then that team won. And, you know, like in other words, the record didn't match your picks. That's what I was getting confused by. Right, right. So, all right, so, all right, so let's just go ahead and run through these real quick then. Uh, so, uh, First game that we have on the list, we have New England going into Jacksonville. Uh, Rich Sporting Books have four and a half point spread. And we're going to put Rich on the hot spot to begin (laughs) with. What do you got, Rich? Well, that spread is crazy because I'm riding the Jacksonville train. They have played well two weeks in a row. Now they're at home. I'm taking Jacksonville, and they will cover. All right. Dean, what do you got? Yeah, Jacksonville is much improved this season. They're going to win and easily cover that spread. Oh. Easily. Uh, as Dean would say, not so fast. Um, one side of me wants to say that uh, Mox is going to keep this losing streak going, but I think Mox has had uh, two slides and uh, I'm calling for the upset. I'm calling for New England on this one. You really are picking New England this time. Yes, I am. This <laughs> time I am picking New England. Here. So yeah, you and Mitch would say that if he was here. Yeah. <laughs> Next game we have uh, Indy hosting Houston and Mitch. There is a seven and a half point spread. We're going to start with you, Dean. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying not so fast on this one. I'm, I'm predicting the upset. I think uh, Indianapolis has something to prove here, and they want to, and they're going to win this game. And it's it'll be close, but it'll be an upset, and uh, the Colts win. All right. Rich. I am taking Houston, and – I believe Mitch is not going to be very happy this week with that 520 yards uh, against him. So I'm going to, I'm assuming Mitch is going to get to work and he's going to take care and dispatch of the Colts by right. seven plus points. All right. Uh, our only pick em game this week, we have um, Pittsburgh hosting the Chargers as a pick em game. And we're going to start with you, Rich. It's a tough game. I mean, is Steve going to bounce back and, and, you know, return to form? Or is Pittsburgh for real? I, I, you know what? I, I'm going to take Pittsburgh until I see Steve wake up. So I'm going to take Pittsburgh in a close game and uh, to take over that division 3-0. and 
All right. Dean. I think Pittsburgh is going to play this game tough, but I think Steve is going to get it back together and Chargers will win. Okay. Um, I got to back up real quick. Uh, for the Indy Houston game, I'm going to pick Houston. And uh, for the Pitt LA game, uh, I'm going to split the baby and, and take Pitt. I'm, I'm a Steeler fan at heart going back in the day. So call it a Gen X thing. Anywho. So I'm the only one here picking Tim to win and picking Steve to win. <laughs> yep. Yeah, pretty much. Point of view here. Pretty much. Yeah. Next Uh, game. Minority. Yeah. Next game, we have Green Bay hosting Las Vegas. And uh, we are given six and a half, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Rich, we are given six and a half to Green Bay, correct? I don't have it in front of me. Well, hold on, hold on. Uh, This is Dean's pick. So. What do you got, Dean? Well, you know, I I guess what I'm going to say is that I think Green Bay right now is kind of in the same spot I am, and that's that's called struggling. And uh, I'll be playing Green Bay week four, so we can we can kind of struggle together, and who knows? That could even be a preview of first pick in the draft. (laughs) Yeah. So, and on the other hand, uh, Mitch is not here to cheerlead for uh, for Barney, so I'm going to do it for him. And I'm not only going to predict that the Vikings are going to win this week, cover the spread, I'm going to put a lead pipe lock on that game. Okay. Yeah, but it's, didn't, did we pick the Green Bay-Vegas game? Uh, let's see. No, we have not picked the Green Bay-Vegas no, game. No, no. no I'm looking at games in the future here. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the wrong game here. No, <laughs> Green Bay, the Raiders, yeah. no I'm, I'm picking the Raiders, but I'm not putting a lead pipe lock on it. No. Okay. The, the Raiders, the Raiders, I think, are going to surprise some people and be good this season. Yeah, sorry. I was thinking it was Green Bay at Minnesota. You're good. Um, you're good. You're good. All right, Dean, what do you have? I mean, uh, Mitch, what do you um, – good God. <laughs> Rich, what do you have? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my God! You, um, you know what? I'm too much libations I don't, I don't tonight. Have a real feel for this game. Uh, Vegas and Green Bay are still kind of mysteries to me. Right. I'm going to take Vegas because I don't like what Green Bay has shown me so far. I'm going to take Ra- the Raiders in a close game. So that means they probably won't cover. Okay. They're on the road. You got to think Green Bay is going to bounce back a little bit. So I'm taking the Raiders close. Okay. No lead pipe lock on that. So I'm no lead pipe right. lock. Okay. So we are done with that one. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to run through this real quick. I am going to go ahead and pick Green Bay on this one. There you go. That puts you in the minority point of view here. Hmm. That's all right. All right, so next game that we have, we have, okay, uh, where were we at? Denver and Denver, Minnesota. Yes. And Dean already told you Minnesota the lead pipe block, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm thinking Minnesota win this lead pipe block in this one. I, I, have, to be, I have to believe Minnesota is going to win this game and likely cover this game, so I'll go with the Vikings, too. Not a lead pipe lock, but Denver has played well also. Okay. Um, I, I think it'll be a close – I think it'll be closer than we think. This is a dangerous game for Barney. Barney loses this game, and his season may be slipping away very quickly. So I got to assume Minnesota's going to win this game. Yes, I'm going with Minnesota on that one as well. So uh, next game we have New York Jets against Washington. Dean. This is going to be a tough game, and, you know, the Jets have been winning, but it's been tough, and the Giants look really good. I mean, the the Redskins rather look really good this past week. I'm picking Washington to win this game. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, Rich, what do you got? I agree. The Jets have not played their best football. They've been on the road for two weeks, been kind of blah, but they did win. Um, historically, if I if my memory is correct, the Jets usually do a pretty good job against Washington. Um, just to win this game at home. I, I suspect their offense will wake up and they'll wake up and play a much better game. Take the Jets. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and go with the Jets as I know that the Jets are going to do what they always do, and we're going to move on from there. So next game we have Chicago and Philadelphia, 13 and a half. Uh, we're going to go with uh, Dean on this one again. I'm picking yet another upset, and I'm picking the Eagles to knock off Chicago and start the season 3-0. and Okay. Uh, Rich, well, what do you got? This is, this is my lock, Mitch's lock of the week. Okay. Chicago wins this game easily. All right. I, I know James has played well. I like James. I like the, his young Eagles. It's going to happen this week. He's going to get blown out by double digits easily, and um, that's just the way it goes. Okay. Uh I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and take Chicago as well. And we're gonna go ahead and go from there. Next game we have New York Giants against Atlanta. What do we have? Uh going with Rich. I don't really have a feel for this game. I, I guess it's it's a what was the spread on this game? It was probably pretty close, right? Yeah. Um it's six and I'm a half. Is it really it Dean, Dean's favor by six and a half? Yeah, I, I think at home, I, I'm going to assume that you're going to wake up and you're going to take care of business at home this week. I don't really like what the Giants – the Giants haven't looked very good so far. I'm going to take the Falcons at home. Okay. Dean, as if I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to agree with that and predict a, a close win. I mean, statistically, neither team has uh, looked very good. Okay. Last game, we have uh, San Francisco hosting Seattle, or actually Seattle hosting San Francisco, six and a half. We're going to go with Dean. Yeah, I'm pretty he upset in this one. I think uh, Seattle is going to be the better better team of these two on that day and uh, are going to uh, win, a game, win the game. It might be close, but I think Seattle wins. All right. Rich, what do you got? I think it will be a close game, and I probably think San Francisco won't cover, but I think San Francisco will find a way. To, well, they'll win, I think. It's a three-point game. I think it'll be close, though. It could go either way. But this oh. this week, I'll take the 49ers. Okay. All right, guys. So we have ran through this. Uh, I know that uh, we're running a little bit late on this, a little bit long. Uh, so as we come to wrap this up, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, hit the round table last time. We're going to go ahead and start with Rich. Any final words? Um, no final words. We're off to a good start. Good luck to all teams this week. And, but I want to know is who's going to say Mitch's tagline at the end. Is oh, gonna do it this week? we're going to leave that one with Dean. <laughs> So, Can you cut in Mitch's voice at the end? I, I don't have that set up yet, so I can't do that. So, <laughs> but we're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and see what uh, Dean can do with his impersonation. So, we're Let's gonna go ahead it, and finish Dean. it off with you, Dean. Uh, any final words for you? Take us home. Yeah, I would say uh, you know continue the trash talk, continue the discussion, and keep the stuff going on WhatsApp and uh, Discord and whatever. And otherwise, the only thing we have to do is let's get it.